Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, so my name is Rebecca Scaris, and I'm the Settlement Video Coordinator at Immigrant Services Calgary. Um, I'm currently working on a project called the How To and Smart Tips video series. Um, you've probably seen our other Facebook Lives. If not, they're in the video section of our Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Um, so this project is going to be 15 videos or more one day. Right now it is 13. Um, and the videos are translated into Farsi, Arabic, Hindi, Spanish, French, Chinese, and Tigrinya, um, which is awesome. Um, you can find them on our YouTube channel and our settlement platform, uh, which I will show you both of those after this. Um, today we're talking about our, what are your school options in Alberta. And we're gonna watch the video and I'm going to introduce our guest. So I'm gonna share my screen again. So uh, this is our YouTube channel. Um, so it is the How To and Smart Tips Immigrant Services Calgary. And as you can see, the Facebook Lives are all posted now on our YouTube channel as well. Um, I cut them down and they actually have little things that say each topic, which makes them a little bit easier to watch, I think. And yeah, all our videos. Um, so today we're focusing on the what are your school options video. And I'm just going to make sure my sound is shared. I believe it is. Okay, so we're going to watch the video now. Hello everyone, we'd like you to meet the Kim family. The Kims just moved to Alberta a few weeks ago and are very excited to start their new lives. The Kims have three children in their family, so mom and dad need to know about the school system in Alberta. The Kims have a lot of questions, so let's get started. Hello, could you give us some information about schools in Alberta? I think the school system is different than back home. You're right. To explain the school system in Alberta, let's start with the three W's. Who, when, and where. Let's start with who goes to school. In Alberta, school is required for children from 6 to 16 years old. School starts at grade 1 and goes until grade 12. Depending how old your child is, they will go to a different type of school. The first is elementary school, which is from grades one to six. Students are usually six to 12 years old. Next is junior high or middle school, which is from grades seven to nine. Students here are usually from 12 to 15 years old. And last is high school. Most high schools go from grades 10 to 12. Most of the students are between 15 to 18 years old. How old are your children? Unji is five years old. Seungi is almost seven years old. And Ji Young is 16 years old. So, Unji wouldn't have to go to school yet. But Seungi would start elementary school. Ji Young would be in high school. Don't worry. Most schools have specialists to support children with low-level English. So when do children go to school in Alberta? Most schools are open from September to June and closed in July and August for summer holidays. During the school year, there are many holidays, but the longest breaks are at Christmas and in spring. Christmas break is in December, and spring break is usually in March or April. And now our last W is where do students go to school? This will depend on what school system your family chooses. Each school system is a different organization with its own rules and funding. There are five main school systems in Alberta. They are the public school system, Public schools are free for families because they are funded by the government. Then there is the separate school system. These are usually Catholic or Protestant education. They are also free. In most cases, children who attend must have a parent or guardian who is Catholic or Protestant. 
Third are private schools. This is a more expensive option as families have to pay a yearly fee for their child because these schools are only partially funded by the government. They may have smaller class sizes and more resources. Fourth are French schools. Families can choose a school that is completely in French, the second official language in Canada. And finally, there are charter schools. These are also free for families. They offer special programs for children. An example is a science-focused school. Thank you. Now that we know the basics of schools in Alberta, how do we register our children in school? Good question. It depends on what school system you choose, as well as what school board you're under. Usually, each community has its own schools. If you are a Canadian citizen, you may contact the school directly or register online. If you are a newcomer, you may have to register at a different location. What documents do we need to register our children? You will need to bring something that shows proof of your address, such as a driver's license or utility bill, your child's birth certificate with your child's name, parents' names, birth date, and country of birth, proof of your child's status in Canada, such as an immigration document or permanent residency card, a baptismal certificate if registering for a Catholic school, if available, your child's previous school report cards and or medical records. Thank you so much. We will get those documents together right away. Does it matter what time of year we register our children? It depends on the school board, but schools usually take in new students throughout the year. So try your best to register your child as soon as you can. Some schools do get full, so the earlier you apply, the better. Got it. We will get started soon. But how will our children get to school? Most schools have designated walk and bus zones. If you live in one of the bus zones, there will be a free to low cost bus to take your child to school. It depends on your child's age and where they live. Some older students might have to take public transit, but schools usually offer discounted student bus passes. Each school system is different, so talk to your school directly to see what options they have. You can also visit the school's website for more information. Thank you so much for your help. We can't wait to get started. Okay. So yeah, that is our video that we made um, with Smart Tips about school. Um, it's a pretty hard topic to summarize into one video because schools are actually different everywhere. Every school board has different rules and that kind of stuff. So like the video said, it's important to um, look at the school board website and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to introduce our wonderful person, our guest that has joined us today. Um, if I say your name wrong, please correct me. Um, okay, so today we're joined by Abiu Halimariam. Is that right? I hope that's right. Um, who is a settlement worker in school at the Calgary Bridge Foundation for Youth. So Abu works uh, as a settlement worker in school with the Calgary Bridge Foundation for Youth. He has a degree in development studies and international relations. As part of an on-job training, he completed a number of trainings in areas such as youth and digital technology, positive youth development, cultural competence. With years of teaching background, Abu has extensive experience of working with youth and their parents. He is currently based at Forest Lawn High School where he supports newcomer students to help them settle and integrate in the school environment and beyond. He also works in collaboration with teachers and other staff in the school to facilitate workshops on different topics so that the youth receive relevant settlement related information. In an effort to support students and parents, Abu recorded short videos on Maharak and English with information on how to access resources on the Calgary Public Library website. These videos are available on the official CBFY YouTube channel. Abu's goal is to support newcomer youth in their settlement journey and establish a successful life in Canada. 
So welcome, welcome to our panel. Um, if you want to unmute and yeah, turn on your view, you said <laughs> appeared. I wasn't talking to myself. Um, okay, so welcome and thank you so much for doing uh, this event with us. Um, I guess my first question before you start your presentation yeah, is so just, you... what, what do you think is the biggest challenge for newcomers or immigrants um, finding school systems and understanding the school systems? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rebecca, for having me. Uh, yeah, as newcomers, you know, parents, there are so many things that they're uh, thinking about, they're worried about their family, their settlement. Uh, and, and things like that. But one of the most important pressing concerns uh, is, is education for their children, because most parents are coming to Canada to give uh, a bright future and better education for their children. So that is one of the most important uh, things that uh, put parents in, in difficult situations sometimes in choosing and, and finding a school. So many parents, so there are different parents, actually. Some parents made a little bit research before they immigrate to Canada. And some parents are refugees uh, who have no idea what's going on in, in Canada and they don't have access, they don't have information. And so they are here. So they have no idea about, about the school system, where to go, uh, uh, what to choose, all that. So depending on the different types of parents, the challenge they face are also different. But generally, uh, the, uh, most of them find it difficult in choosing between school boards. Uh, the video indicates there are different uh, school systems and there are different uh, uh, requirements and approach, all, of, all those kind of things. So the moment they, have, they, they arrived here, they hear you know, from different parents or they might read uh, uh, different sources where these different school boards and systems are discussed and they, they really find it confusing and challenging to pick one. So some parents after they enrolled, I have, I have encountered different parents after they enrolled in one system, for example, in the public school system, they eventually pulled out their children uh, and then enrolled in the Catholic school system. So uh, it's hard to make a decision uh, right away. And then they, as they go, they learn about that school system they see what their children are doing. And then if they are not happy with those kind of things, and then they move on. So picking and deciding uh, the school to enroll their children is one, one big challenge, but those mm -hmm. challenges are addressed by, you know, accessing more information uh, from mm -hmm. different immigrant agencies, from different school boards, the websites, and then consulting with other uh, specialists who are who are helping in providing those information. Yeah, <clears throat> I think every everyone that comes, well, all people want their children to have the best, right? That's right. They come and they just, I don't know, it's quite overwhelming when you come yeah. to Canada and you have you have to put your kids in school, but you also got to find a job, but you also got to like do all this other yeah. stuff. So. You're just like public school. That's fine. And then that's you're like, no, maybe public school is not the best or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how about we get started with your uh, your presentation, if you want to share your screen? Yeah, that's right. So I don't want to repeat most of the thing because the system and then the boards are, are, are already discussed in the video. And then I like that video, which provide a concise and, and very informative uh, yeah. information like, uh, but I will try to focus on the routine, some of the expectations from parents and then from mm -hmm. students, all those kind of uh, information. So uh, I will move on sharing my presentation here. Yep. So my name is Abiu, as Rebecca already uh, introduced. So I work uh, as in-school settlement practitioner or settlement uh, worker in school with the Calgary Bridge Foundation for Youth. Uh, so our work foundation works in collaboration with the uh, two school boards, the two major school boards in, in Calgary, the Calgary uh, Board of Education uh, and the Catholic School District. And we also work in collaboration and in partnership with the Calgary Public Library. So our program is funded by uh, the Canadian government, uh, specifically by Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada. Uh, uh, to help us provide important settlement 
and school related information to parents. Uh, so our program has different streams. We have the mentorship program, and then we have the settlement workers in school program. So the mentorship program basically uh, provide connections uh, uh, for students in junior high and uh, high school. So they connect them with mentors who have been here for about two, two three years, and then who are now familiar with the city, the school system, and things like that. And then they are paired with newcomer students so that they will feel confident and they, they get more information about the, the city, about the school system, and then the routines within the school. So the settlement service, the settlement program, uh, provide a comprehensive settlement services, including uh, uh, to parents and students, because students also need uh, resources, material resources and information resources. So those are provided by the settlement workers in schools. So we have uh, offices in different schools in both uh, school boards and provide support to the students and their parents in collaboration with, with teachers. <clears throat> so uh, the objectives of this workshop, this information session, participants uh, will, will have uh, important information about school environment. They will, they will be able to prepare uh, their child for school and they will have more information about how to prepare their uh, children for school. And they will identify uh, the roles and responsibilities of parents and students to help their students uh, succeed in, in, in the school. And they will be able to navigate available resources in schools and in the community to help their children uh, succeed in their <clears throat> uh, school activities. So to begin with, uh, uh, as, you, as you saw in the video, uh, the school starts at certain uh, time of the year but there are generally two school calendar, specifically for, for the uh, Calgary Public Library, I mean, sorry, Calgary uh, Board of Education. And these are traditional calendar and modified calendar. So the traditional calendar starts in September and then it's end in June. And the modified calendar, it starts in August and it ends in June. Uh, so for the modified calendar, it is starting in August, but it ends in the same time in June, but they will have more breaks uh, during the year. So they will compensate that early start uh, throughout the year. So you might have, if you register in a school where uh, a traditional calendar is applicable, so your child will start in September. So if the student is, Designated has a designated school who has modified calendar, then they will start in August. So that's already discussed the school calendars, the hours, different schools have different starting hours. So they usually start at 8.30, but some schools start early or later than that. So it's good to talk to the school. The first time when you go to school, you will have those kind of information. And uh, the school also gives some orientation about uh, food and snacks, because it's important that we are aware about uh, those kind of things. Because, for example, uh, many students in, in Calgary have, have allergies for some kind of food. So it's important to uh, have that information when we prepare lunch or snacks for our students, uh, we need to be aware what we are sending because especially in elementary school, children are sharing, picking some, some food from friends. So uh, uh, those kind of things, you know, the food may have uh, something which is uh, allergy for the other students, particularly uh, peanuts. Uh, or products of nuts are very allergic to many, many students. Uh, and, and it's important to talk to the school and then to know about this kind of uh, information and to implement those. 
uh, attendance is very important again. So students are expected to be, to be in school uh, uh, for most of the year, but there might be some reasons where students are not able to attend in, in, in the school. So different reasons can, can prevent students from, from going to school, but that has to be communicated in advance with the school. So parents have the option to give a call uh, uh, to the office and then to provide that information. If a student is, for example, sick and unable to attend uh, the school, uh, it has to be communicated in advance. Otherwise, if we have, for example, 20 days of absent within the year, so the school will assume, will take that as, as a missed year. It's not only for those 20 days, but for the whole year will be assumed as a missed. So it's important to, to make sure that students are attending uh, a class. And then if they are not able to attend, it's important to communicate that so that you know, students, I mean, teachers and school are aware about uh, the uh, reason why the student is away from, from class. <clears throat> Holidays and professional days, this will be communicated. Every school board, as I said earlier, will have a calendar. So you can access that, you can access that calendar in advance and then you can see which days are holidays and then which days are professional days. So professional days are days where teachers will get some uh, advanced training or extra training to help themselves uh, execute their responsibilities as a teachers, uh, to provide more uh, uh, teachings, more ways of lesson, pro provision, they will, they will be able to get uh, those kind of trainings. So uh, the, in these uh, professional days, the school will be closed. So you don't have to send uh, as you, your child to the school in the PD or professional days, but those days will be communicated in advance uh, by, by each school. The other one is early dismissals. So these are particularly true for the uh, Calgary Board of Education, for the public school. We don't have early dismissals for the Catholic school. Uh, so the early dismissals is when students are sent home uh, early. So this happens every Friday in the public school. More than 200 schools have early dismissals. That means students will finish their class at one o'clock or 12.30. So it's important to have that information so that <clears throat> you will be able to prepare uh, yourself or somebody else to pick the student early and then to stay with, with that student uh, at, at, at home. Or some parents also arrange some daycare for the rest of the day every Friday. So that is also an important information. Uh, snow days, uh, uh, Calgary is a snow city, so it's important that we have the appropriate clothing. Uh, so winter jacket, boot, you know, hat, and then gloves, all those kind of things need to be prepared. But in the school, especially if it is more than minus 20, then the school will be like, it would want to be closed, but students will not be allowed to go outside for recess time for the break time to play or to have fun outside. So whenever it is uh, uh, minus 20 and above, then they will be, they will be remaining at, at uh, the class and then they will continue learning from there. And then sometimes if it's extremely cold, then there might be a possibility for uh, cancellation. Class might be canceled. <clears throat> so once you get, registered uh, your, your uh, child for a school, it's important to have some activities in advance, like one day or two days before uh, sending the student to the school, it's important to familiarize, to give some information and to take the student out around, around the school and then to show you know, the area so that the student will not be confused when, when uh, he or she comes to the school. 
So some of the things to do is, for example, to help the students crossing the street because most of the schools are very close, particularly the elementary schools are very close to uh, uh, the house where uh, you will be living, like uh, in the neighborhood. So it's kind of walking distance. So you can walk with, with the child and then show how to cross the street. Or if the student is biking, okay, so uh, the student will be, will be able to ride and then try to uh, navigate again the uh, transportation, taking a bus. That's also another, another thing to do before uh, the first day of the school. Uh, encourage your child to share uh, his or her thoughts or feelings. Like some students are nervous to start a new uh, uh, school. Uh, and then they are in new country and then the school is new, right? So it might be like uh, uh, worrying for, for students. So it's good to uh, assure and reassure the students that everything will be all right. So talking to the students, uh, make sure to, making sure that they are, you know, uh, well ready to start the school is one, one important thing to do. Discuss any concept the child may have, like they might have some concern, they might have some question. So encourage them to ask those questions before they start their, their school. Ask if the school has ways to make new children. Uh, so uh, feel welcome in their new school uh, so that you know, they will be connected with, with those new students in the school. And then they will be, they will be able to feel that uh, welcoming environment. If the child is older, they might have timetables that shows what time different classes begin and end. So they are timetable, the schedule of the day. So they will be given those timetables at the first day and they have to know, they have to be like allowed to communicate that with, with uh, their friends and then with other staff members who can provide those explanation about uh, the timetable. Some, some students might get it very difficult to understand. It may be confusing. So you can also, as a parent, you can also help them understand that by calling the school, by booking an, an appointment, or by explaining the timetable uh, uh, yourself. So who is uh, who at the school? So there are different uh, uh, individuals. Uh, who will be able to help you in the school. So the school secretary is the first person you meet in the main office. So if you have any question about uh, the school, about your, your children, or if you have any concern, you can just talk to the secretary to book an appointment with the teacher or with a principal. Uh, uh, so that's the first person to contact. And when you give a call to the school, Mostly, this is the school secretary who is responding the the call. So you can you can talk to the secretary about your concern, uh, about your question, or anything related to your child's school. So there are also career advisors and counselors, especially in in high school. So high school is a place where students will will be prepared to choose uh, uh, their their uh, future in terms of career and then the post-secondary education. So these are the people who will be providing important and critical information about those kind of things, about what, what to choose, for example, in terms of university or college, or what job to be, to be uh, engaged in after high school. So there are, there are different experts in those areas. So uh, counselors are available. So each student will have his or her own counselor in high school. So they can, they can book an appointment by uh, contacting the student service. So they will be able to uh, sit and discuss about those uh, uh, issues with, with the counselors. Resource teacher, and then it, especially in high school, you have resource uh, teacher uh, or, or who, is, who is from the Calgary uh, Police uh, Services and uh, other, other, other offices. So in most high schools, uh, there, is, there is a police officer, but when you see that police officer, 
it's just to make sure that everything is safe, every, you know, students feel safe in, in, in those, in those environments. Uh, guidance counselor, the same thing, you know, in, in, in career advisors, but this one is specifically with the courses within high school. So the career advisors are the post-secondary uh, uh, advisors or counselors, but this one, the guidance counselor, is basically for the courses that you are doing within high school. So they will help you in picking and choosing uh, uh, some of the courses, especially in high school. And the principal and vice principal is uh, the person who is in charge of the whole school, who is going to make many of the decisions that is affecting uh, the school activities. Uh, so the school boards, uh, as you might see the, uh, on the video, there are general uh, presentation about different school boards and different school systems. So most of the schools in, in, in Calgary have different specializations. So none of the two schools in different school boards are the same because they are different uh, in terms of specialization in terms of focus areas. So some schools, for example, have options for language. So if students want to learn Spanish, there are certain schools who can provide that as an, as, as, as an option. So parents can make their own research if their students speak a little bit Spanish or if they came from a Spanish speaking country and then want the children to continue learning Spanish, so they have to make a research, which is because all schools don't provide Spanish as a second language, for example, or as an, a language option. So there are certain schools who provide that. So parents can have the option uh, uh, when, when they go to uh, the school boards or the reception centers when they make their registration. And if there are also focus areas. Some schools focused on science, some schools focus on arts. So again, depending on the uh, inclination or, or the motivation of the student, the goal of the student, parents can also have these options. So they can enroll their child into a school where science is a focus or art is a focus. So they can also discuss this when, when they, they register uh, uh, their, their children for school at the reception centers. So there are also differences in terms of teaching philosophy. So some, some schools uh, have a modern approach for delivering their lessons, uh, uh, but some schools also depend on traditional way of uh, teaching. So these are called TLCs, traditional learning centers. So these are basically uh, uh, like in the 80s or 70s, they, they are like more demanding, disciplined, uniformed, and they need more uh, uh, from their students in terms of homework and assignments. So these are the traditional learning centers and some parents want their, their students to, to enroll in this kind of schools, but they need to talk to, there are different procedures for that. The regular classes, the regular schools are there, but the TLC, they are limited in terms of number across the city in Calgary, for example. So they need to talk to uh, uh, the, the registration uh, uh, person in, 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 in the uh, reception centers that they want to enroll their children to TLC. Montessori, again, a philosophical issue. This is because the way they teach is different, not the content, but the way, because in Alberta, all schools are required to follow one curriculum, right? It's not about the content, it's about how to deliver the, that content, that lesson. So that's the difference, that's the method, methodological difference. So the mentorsary is student-led, right? Hands-on learning, so students is a leader. So teachers there are helping students to learn. They are not like lecturing. They are not like the ones who are, you know, leading the uh, uh, lesson. But the students, depending on the interest of the students, they will facilitate the learning. So it's basically more activities for the students. So the academic achieving, the AP and the uh, uh, IB, 
or international uh, uh, baccalaureate program. So these are also, uh, there are schools who have uh, uh, these kind of programs. Uh, these programs will enable, especially in high schools, enable students to take college level courses. Again, this is one option. If parents believe that their child is very uh, uh, academic, very, rigorous learner, very like, you know, active learner, then they might consider this. So that, you know, the child in high school will be able to take some courses, which will give the child uh, post-secondary credits, college or university credits. They take it in, in high school, but they get uh, college credits for that. Uh, so if they have that option, if they have that interest, they might also consider these uh, schools where uh, they have these programs. Diverse learning, again, different students are, you know, students are different, you know, also, um, for different reasons. Some are culturally different, some are, you know, in their learning capacity, they are different. So that diversity is there so each school has its own way of addressing this diverse learning needs so parents should not worry about the way that their children are learning they might be slow learners or active learners so it, depending on that you know students will 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 be given the the chance to study uh, based on their capability so this diverse learning focus uh, uh, is, is, is just to give students the, the chance to learn based on their needs. For example, as newcomer students arrived, let me give you one example, for example, for this diverse learning. So if a student is assessed for language and if they don't have any English background or any uh, uh, experience in learning English language, they will be assigned to a school where uh, uh, a program is available so that they will be able to get those support. For example, some schools have the program called LEAD program. So in that program, these students from all over the country, all over the world who don't have any English at all. Some students don't have like ABC. Uh, so they might be learning in their own language back home, but they arrived here. So for that kind of diversity, there are schools who have a special program. So the registration site is a place where these kind of things are assessed and then students will be assigned based on their need. <clears throat> so the online learning, so they have online learning and then now the provincial government, I mean, provincial school boards are now thinking about continuing this online learning. And there is already an online option before the pandemic, before COVID. Uh, for example, the CDE eLearn. So they have this uh, online option for students. Students can learn from home, uh, but with COVID, more, more uh, parents are also interested in continuing that. So this is the hub online learning. So you also have option to enroll your child for online learning. <coughs> So raising and educating uh, a child is a shared responsibility between, between uh, schools and parents and students themselves uh, have also responsibility. So uh, students are expected to uh, embrace all diversities because this is a country where diversity is celebrated. So it's, uh, you know, there are different cultures from all over the world and those cultures and do, those diversities are also reflected in the school, reflected in the classroom. So students need to be aware that everybody is uh, equal, everybody is welcome, despite all those differences uh, and backgrounds. So parents uh, can help in educating their children that they need to embrace, they need to accept, they need to live with uh, all kinds of diversities. And the uh, students need to respect the rights of others, okay? And then their rights will be respected as well. So if they believe that somebody is infringing, somebody is just coming 
to their daily lives and I'm trying to uh, 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 do something uh, uh, unnecessary to, to them, they, they have the right to uh, voice that out and then to tell the teacher, the principal and their parents so that it will be addressed. So they will uh, uh, be uh, given some orientation, some education in the school, so they will be able to understand all these kind of things, but parents also need, need, need to help uh, their, their children to uh, accept this and then move on. Uh, students need to use positive and inclusive language. So the language, so it, in Canada, uh, you know, the language that we use to, in, in our daily today interactions uh, are, are important because some of the wording, some of the things that we say and doesn't matter back, back home may not be the same here. So it's good to learn how to communicate, not only in terms of language, but in terms of the way we communicate with, with our uh, uh, classmates, students' classmates. So they need to, to know how to communicate with their, student, with their classmates and teachers and other school community, school community members. So it's important to be aware about this uh, uh, language aspect as well. So attend school regularly. That's what we talked about, the attendance piece. Uh, uh, so protect the school property. So while they are in the school, students are expected to use all the properties in the school compound properly and they are not expected to damage or vandalize uh, uh, the property, the school property by themselves, or if they see someone doing that, they need to uh, report that to the school uh, uh, administration, to their teachers or to the office. So in, they are also expected to engage in school work. Uh, so they need to do their homework, submit their assignment on time, and participate in different extracurricular activities that are expected from each student. So parents can help uh, uh, their, their students, uh, uh, their children to, to do all these kind of things. Uh, parents' responsibilities, again, in enhancing the children learning uh, capacity and then a successful uh, completion of certain lessons and then uh, uh, graduating from high school if students are in high school. So parents can, can help by participating in the student's education. So car parents can participate in different ways. Uh, uh, they can, for example, uh, uh, attend different programs in the school. So the school might organize different events for parents to come in and, and participate. Uh, I will talk about those uh, aspects uh, uh, in a moment, but parents need to be ready for, for uh, actively participating in, in their children's school life, both in and outside the school. So outside, for example, helping their children to go to the library, to get the library card, to get uh, books from the library, and to take them to different uh, uh, activities that will help them learn and be active in their, in their learning process. So they can also help the child to meet their responsibilities. The responsibilities that we uh, mentioned earlier, parents have, have a role to play uh, because students are responsible to some of their, their uh, uh, activities. Uh, so there are, there are different ways uh, uh, that the parents uh, can help with uh, uh, the students. Report concerns to the school promptly. So if they have any concern, if the student comes and then tell parents that they have something that they don't like from their friends, either from the teacher or from something like that, and if they repeat that, they have to bring that concern to the school uh, immediately. For example, some students might uh, face uh, uh, unnecessary uh, uh, challenges uh, like from their friends in terms of uh, comments about different aspects of the students. OK, 
okay? So if they don't like that, and then if the students are repeating, and that's that's uh, that's a concern. And then if the students uh, is 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 uh, able to mention that to to parents, parents need to bring that to uh, the school's attention, and that has to be addressed immediately. Uh, communicate with a teacher. So there are different ways to communicate with a teacher. We will see that in a moment, but it's important to communicate with a teacher so that you know, the teacher and the parent will be on the same page in terms of understanding what's going on in the child's education. <clears throat> Attend uh, uh, parent-teacher interviews regularly. So these parent-teacher interviews they, they are called in, in Calgary parent-teacher interview, but they might have different names uh, in different countries. So these are the sessions that the school organize uh, uh, to, be, to, to help parents sit down with the, with the school teacher uh, to discuss about their children, about the school, about everything really in relation to the education. And the, the uh, life of the student within the school. So teachers have this comprehensive understanding and, and uh, uh, ideas about, about uh, the students. So they will be able to communicate that to the parents. Parents also can put their concerns, their suggestions, questions to the teachers. So these are very important. So parents need to be active in participating, booking and participating in uh, these interview, interviews. So the schedules are sent to, to, to parents. Uh, so parents need to book and they don't have to worry about their, their language. So if, if they don't speak English, the school will provide interpreter in their own language. So language should not be a barrier uh, for you to sit down and communicate with a school teacher. So that, that should be also uh, taken into consideration. Celebrate and encourage your uh, child's efforts and success. So it's always good to encourage and, and uh, celebrate the success of the child so that that motivation will, will continue uh, uh, and, and impact the next step, the next action of the child. So we have to follow uh, uh, what's happening. And whenever we see success uh, and, and efforts, we have to push it forward and we have to celebrate, we have to appreciate uh, uh, that. Whenever there is a challenge, we have to try to help the student to address those challenges. <clears throat> so we need to be like a positive influence as parents and, and as family members. We need to be a positive influence for the child so that the child will be successful in, in, in school, be it in elementary or high school. So uh, uh, involving directly in, in, in the school and becoming uh, a role model, like modeling behavior, showing and for example, if we are able to read books, it's good to read our own books in the school, I mean, at home, so that you know, the student will accept that it is something good to do, like to read. So we need to be in the way we speak. So that's also something that we can do in terms of uh, trying to show good behavior. And then reinforcing attitudes. So, Teacher, I mean, students might have different uh, positive attitudes. So we are there to reinforce those, uh, we, to validate those, to, to help students uh, stick with those kind of, you know, reinforcing uh, behaviors, re reinforcing uh, efforts, and uh, uh, help them continue positively with, with their life in the school. <clears throat> Uh, so, as I said earlier, parents need to, to be engaged in their children's school life. So the school boards, different school boards, different schools have different ways of uh, communication and they also expect uh, uh, parents to be active in those, in those means of communications. So D12, for example, it's a desire to learn. Uh, so this is a space, a digital space, online space, where 
you know, you can see the progress of uh, the students in terms of scores, in terms of uh, the assignments that the student is doing, in terms of sometimes comments from, from uh, the teacher. So there is, uh, or bright space or home logic, all these are uh, uh, somewhat similar. So you will have the login information, the password and username for this page. So you will be able to log in from home and see what's happening in terms of, so you will have a parent access for this page. So online page about assignments that's given today for a student, uh, the scores that the student is uh, getting for particular subject for math, English or social studies. So you can see that and then you can you can uh, uh, understand where the student stands, and then you can you can help out in in different ways. So this is very important. You can also communicate. You can write. You can access uh, the email of the student. I mean the teacher. So you can directly communicate from this uh, uh, page uh, with with the teacher. So you don't have to wait the schedule for teacher parent interview, uh, but you can you can start the conversation, ask questions, and communicate with, with uh, uh, the teacher or the school using these platforms. Uh, parent council, so there are meetings uh, uh, in, in, in the year, so you can also be part of this council and then you can voice your, your concern, you can provide suggestions, comments, because uh, school is a community thing so we can have we can play a role we can we can provide some constructive comments and suggestions so that the school will uh, improve the school will do better uh, for for the following year uh, so this is a council made up of parents of that particular um, students of that particular school they come together every month in most schools and discuss about common issues discuss about different aspects of the school. So you can be part of this council and, and be active in, in terms of providing your, your views about uh, the school, how the school is working. And then you can also volunteer uh, uh, in the school. So different volunteering opportunities. So if you have a, an interest to volunteer in your child's school, uh, the schools are very, very happy so you need to go through certain procedure so you can communicate with the school, express your interest to volunteer and, and go through those procedures and then you'll be able to start volunteering. And then there are different information sessions, ASL and ELL, English as second language and ELL, English language learners. So different information nights are prepared for this particular group of students uh, in different schools. So if your child falls in this, as if the child is uh, uh, learning English as a second language, uh, you might get this information nights very helpful. Uh, so you might be able to attend and, and uh, get relevant uh, information. So attend parents and teacher interviews, that's what uh, I already mentioned. So multicultural events and celebrations mm -hmm. This is also where, because as we already said, Canada is a multicultural nation. So different cultures from different parts of the world are coming here and they are allowed to preserve their own culture while they learn the culture of their uh, uh, second home uh, or their new home in, 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 in Canada. When, while they embrace their own, uh, I mean, the new culture, they still, uh, have the right to maintain, keep their own culture. So schools are one of the places where these cultures can be uh, uh, displayed, uh, celebrated. So you might be interested in participating. So the schools will communicate that to, to the uh, uh, parents that they will, they will require, I mean, they will ask if you are interested to come with, for example, traditional dressing, traditional food, they will have different events where you can, you can uh, present your own culture. So you can also participate in that way. School assemblies, so they also have different uh, uh, 
assemblies and then you can also participate as parents you can also participate in these assemblies again to voice and to out your your, your views and to help the school do better for for uh, the future <clears throat> uh, the other thing is especially for elementary uh, uh, students parents are uh, you know the big influencers in terms of in terms of uh, adopting good habits, uh, for example, reading habit, because reading is very, very important, particularly for those who, are, who have English as a second language. It's very, very important. Uh, so it's, it's important to show them how to, how to develop this. If we don't have uh, the ideas or we don't have the information about those, those things, we can ask, uh, 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 teachers, we can ask other other uh, individuals or uh, people who can help you out in uh, getting this relevant information. <clears throat> so I will, I will open this uh, uh, video, and uh, it would, will show how 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 parents can help uh, uh, students, particularly in terms of developing the culture of reading. It's good. You can't Only go out. one hour of TV. That's it. Done? Sit down now. I'll help you with your Not homework. on a school night. We've all been there. Micromanaging, monitoring their activities, helping with homework. But guess what? These are not the things that will make the biggest difference in your kid's academic success. So what does work? People for Education knows. After sifting through 30 years of research from around the world, they have extracted the most important lessons for success. First, have high expectations. Let your kids know you expect them to do well, that you believe in them, and that their education matters. So try this. If you work hard, I know you can do well. How do you think you can improve next time? I think you can do even better. In our family, we care about school. 55 studies have looked at the lives of 300,000 kids, and guess what? High expectations deliver. More than drilling them with flashcards or helping them with homework. Number two, talk about school. It sounds obvious, but don't just ask how was school today. Be specific, let them strut their stuff. They love it when they feel smarter than you. Try this instead. So what was it like dissecting a frog? Have you thought about what courses you might want to take next year? Did you get to go outside for recess today? A study of over 25,000 U.S. grade 8 students found that talking to your kids about school has a bigger impact than limiting TV time or how often they go out during the week. Number three, help your kids develop good work habits and a positive attitude. Help shape their work habits and planning. Encourage them to ask for help when they need it and help them navigate a world full of distractions. So try this. Your persistence paid off. I knew you could do it. That's so great that you knew to get help when those girls called you names. We all find some things hard, but I know you can work through this. I can see you feel really bad about the mark on that test. What do you think you could do differently next time? So help your kids develop a positive attitude and good work habits. The research shows it's more important than focusing on test scores. Number four read together. Reading is the foundation for education. So grab a book and read together often. So try this. Let's sit down and cuddle with your sister and read. This book is great. What do you think will happen next? You should read this book when I'm finished. I think you'll love it. Studies show that when parents read to kids at five, they are more likely to love reading and do better in math and spelling by the time they're 16. So remember, it's important to read to your kids for fun rather than focusing on phonics. School and homework is a challenge for children and for parents. Your job is to support achievement, so don't be a homework policeman or a substitute teacher. Instead, tell them you expect that they will work hard and do their best. Talk with them about school. Help them develop good work habits to persist even when the going gets tough and encourage them to love reading. So talk with your kids and leave the nagging and micromanaging behind you're more likely to have a successful student and a great atmosphere at home. Yeah, so 
That's a great it's video. important. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to be part of the children education and we'll try our best to help. And it's also good to communicate with teachers. Teachers have good ideas uh, on how to help uh, our children at home to help them succeed in their, in their education. Uh, so there are different ways we can help as, as a video shows. There are also other ways where we can play uh, a positive role in helping uh, healthy development in our, in our children. Uh, so focusing on competency and achievement, so we can help our, our, our children to be, to be competent in, in different ways. And then we can, we can focus on certain competency at a time and always celebrate when they are able to achieve. Uh, so these are some, some of the uh, things that will help uh, healthy uh, development. And the other one is social interaction with peers and adults. And it's also important to help them get together with, with their peers, discuss different things. And if they are able to socialize, if they are able, if they are successful in socializing themselves with their peers and with other adults as needed, that will also boost their confidence and help them uh, uh, develop that uh, healthy habits and then be successful in their, in their education and in their life. So diversity of interactions is also very important. Different aspects of diversity are there. They can, they can interact with different cultural uh, groups when they interact with peers. They don't have to always stick with, with their own, like if they are from uh, uh, you know, Syria, for example, or if they are from, from Mexico, they don't have to stick with the same uh, student who has the same cultural background. It's something that, that attracts something to do. I mean, something comfortable to do, but it's also important to diversify uh, interactions with different uh, people. Uh, so participation in school and community activities, this is also very important. Uh, students can be volunteering in the school. Uh, uh, elementary students can also engage in different activities uh, and fundraising. Uh, for different causes in the community, in their school community, as well as uh, uh, in their neighborhood. Uh, high school students can participate in different uh, uh, engagements, like they can also volunteer and, and they can go out and help uh, the community uh, in different ways. So uh, being participant and active in the community will also help in their healthy development self-exploration and definition, and then allowing students and children to be uh, uh, you know, independent in terms of like identifying their, their own needs, their own purpose, their own goals, instead of us imposing what, what they need to do in terms of, like, for example, uh, their academic uh, uh, life. Uh, we don't have to like impose our interest. It's important also to, to help them explore their own interest and define their, their goals. Routine, you know, limits and structures. So the routine, the daily routines, again, we have to also try to encourage them to, to daily uh, engage their own activities, put some expectations and try to see how they are, they are living up to that uh, expectation and help them uh, achieve the goals they put for every day, every week, and uh, uh, for the semester in terms of their, their school life, for example. And it's also important to uh, help them engage in physical activities. There are different uh, recreational activities in the cities, so parents can register their children for these activities. So after school or over the weekend, uh, students can involved in different physical activities so that they will be fit, they will be like healthy in terms of uh, uh, their life, uh, both in and outside of the school. Uh, so parents, if they need anything about their children, there are different ways to get support. So these support are available in schools or outside of the school. So it's always important to talk to the school if that resource is within the school, 
then the school will, will help parents access those services, access those supports. But if there is no support for that particular need for the parents and students, schools are also uh, aware about other resources in the community. So they will help uh, parents access those resources by making some reference. So it's important whenever uh, there is a need for some kind of support, it's important to talk to different uh, uh, members of the school, like the guidance and counselor, if it is in high school, uh, uh, if students are struggling in different ways, it's important to talk to these uh, counselors so they will have some ideas to help uh, the student cope up with some of the challenges and parents to get uh, resources both in and outside of the school. So there are also in school settlement practitioners who have information about uh, uh, resources in the community. Uh, so this also uh, can help in, in connecting parents and students with resource. There are interpreters. Uh, the school will provide interpret interpreters in different uh, situation if parents want to communicate uh, with the school uh, and teachers. There are after school programs, mentorship programs uh, in and outside of the school. Uh, so CB uh, also have diversity learning and support uh, advisory or DALSA. So if students have different needs, uh, if, you know, and that need is, emanating from their diverse nature. So the CBE assess that, there is always an assessment. So if that is a case that need to be referred, they have their DALSA or diversity and learning support advisors. They will invite those people and these individuals or professionals from different cultural background, they come in and help the parent and the student in those particular needs. Uh, and then the same thing with the Catholic school district. These are the two major school boards in uh, uh, Calgary. So the, Cal the Calgary Catholic school district, again, it's also by referral because there need to be some assessment if that is uh, going to be referred, for example, one program called intercultural wellness. So these are also support workers who can provide uh, uh, support to parents and students based on their, their culture. So this culture specific supports. So multicultural support, again, the same thing, but depending on the case, depending on the need, so the school will decide which one to be referred to. <clears throat> so that's generally what I have for you today. Uh, but if you have any question, uh, please, uh, you can ask now. I don't see any questions. I did see a couple of thank yous. And someone said, this is very informative and helpful. I have a three-year-old baby who's excited to go to school soon. Yeah, a three-year-old, I'm surprised. That, three-year-old. It's like yeah, yeah. two more years, right? They still have two more years before they have to go to school, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just ask you one question and then we'll yeah. see if anyone asks any questions. Um, I had so many. <laughs> Um, so you talked about, uh, like challenges, that kind of stuff and all that. What do you, what is the weirdest challenge you've ever seen that someone had just like in their country, the school was very different or what was the weirdest challenge you've ever seen? Yeah, I think I, I, uh, I touched a little bit about that, like the, in high school, for example, let me pick that one. So a newcomer family with uh, uh, a student who is, who is uh, joining a high school. So they, mm -hmm. they are expected to go those assessment language as well as uh, academic assessment mm -hmm. and the CB welcome center for the Calgary uh, uh, Board of Education and the mm -hmm. St. John Reception Center for the Catholic School District. So they went through that and then their child is evaluated and then sent to high school. And then at that, moment during the evaluation at the end of that evaluation the assessor will tell the parents or oh, your child because of he's 16 years old and he's going to grade 11 mm -hmm. and then parents will are they happy and then okay thank you and then they come to school so mm -hmm. in canada it's, as we know it's based on their age students are assigned to a grade based mm -hmm. on their age not based on their academically 
So they will be in grade 11, mm -hmm. uh, but technically they may not be able to start the mainstream Canadian high school courses, which are expected uh, from Canadians in grade 11. Uh, so, so they have to is, take a different one, okay. Yeah, it's a, the very, because that's a confusion. I have different families and then they are like, after, after two years, they are, you know, expected to leave high school before even oh. they start the high school courses. Yeah. So this student coming in grade 11 and parent expecting to student to graduate after a one year because they heard about oh. Oh, and they're like, level. awesome, they're going to yeah. graduate. You're like, yeah. it doesn't transfer so, over. So, exactly. so, it's, it's so the, do they the, stay? The do they stay challenge. in high school? Do they stay in high school then? Like longer? Yeah, they will, they will go to high school and they will be like ESL and LL learners. So okay. their focus will be only on the language. Even if there is a name called social science, yeah, math or other, but the mm -hmm. focus is English. It's not like grade 11 social science. It's not grade oh, okay. So mm -hmm. the focus is language. So when they are able to reach to the level four, so in high school, there are five levels for ASL learners. So mm -hmm. a student need to be at level four or five to start the main high school courses. Oh, okay. So before, sometimes before they reach that level, they, they become like 18 or 19 years old. Ah, so if and then they will be interested to leave high school. So that's that's a oh. struggle. That's, that's a struggle. A yeah, I, I there's like struggles that we don't even know. Um, yeah. So um, it sounds like you're from Ethiopia. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so um, I recently talked to someone from Ethiopia and yeah. uh, she does a lot of support work. And she said that whenever the government or program has something like you have to apply on your birthday and they make it your birthday, um, she yeah. has to work way over time because what happened in a lot of refugee camps was they just told all the refugees to put January 1st or whatever yeah. as their birthday. So you will get like 200 clients that have the yeah. same birthday according to their like immigration documents. Um, so yeah. she said for her, a lot of programs don't factor that in because that's just not a thing here, right? Like yeah. you're an individual, you have your own birthday. Um, I've even asked students like, so when's your birthday? And they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? Like, how would you not know when your birthday is? But it's just kind of how it is, I guess. So that was just a weird challenge that I heard of that I was like, I don't think the government even thinks about that. They're just like birthdays, that will be good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one yeah. big struggle, I guess. But yeah. last question. Um, so you mentioned about guidance counselors. For me, those are for uh, mental health as well, I thought. Yeah. Um, but what can parents do if their children are suffering from mental health problems in a school? Yeah, the first thing is, you know, it's, it's hard. Like mental health, many of the parents from their cultural background, uh, don't believe in uh, it. they don't have any idea about the existence mm -hmm. of that aspect, like mental mm -hmm. health and then mental uh, illness, like it's it's a challenge. First, the first challenge is to communicate that there is such a thing called mental health. Mm. Uh, some 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 parents and students struggle with that, but they don't have the name and they don't mm -hmm. accept because mental health. If someone is struggling with mental health, they assume that back home it's crazy. You no, know, my. It's, it's expected that for a person to be labeled uh, in that level, that person should be on the street, mm. crazy, something like that. Oh, like they so just can't, they can't see normal people having mental health issues. Yeah, so that's the cultural taboo that yeah. they say that there is uh, this thing and we assume that there is a mental health struggle. So your child uh, need some counseling, some support in that regard. Mm. They refuse. Most parents refuse. They deny that. No, my my child is healthy, mm. and and uh, they she or he doesn't need this kind of intervention. Mm. They so, see a flaw, I guess, right? Like, yeah. no, my child doesn't have that flaw. No, yeah, yeah. So it's important. There are parents that they need to know that even a normal person 
uh, like, you know, we have a physical health and then we have also mental health. So mm -hmm. it's important to know that uh, 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 as we care for our physical health, we also need to care for our mental health. So exactly. it's not a taboo. There are so many supports there. So mm -hmm. students and parents need to uh, access this support. So as much as possible, we'll try to explain those kind of challenges and mm -hmm. then help parents to access uh, these resources, either in the school or outside the school, depending okay. on the nature and, and level of uh, challenge that the student is going through. Okay, well, thank you so much. I don't see any questions other than my questions. Um, so um, everyone, there is, um, I put uh, the Calgary Bridge Foundation for Youth is in the chat on Facebook. So if you're watching this, there is um, a link there if you want to reach out to them for support in your school journey. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming and being our guest. And uh, yeah, that's all from us. Yeah, thank, thank you, so you very much, much uh, Becca, Bye. for having me. Yeah, thank you very much for everyone to, to watch. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.